Welcome to Floppy Deep Dive. If this is your first time here, thank you for joining me and checking out my channel. I hope you enjoy what you see and we've got a lot of content out there for you to check out. If you're a regular, you know I love you. You guys are the best. You keep coming back, you comment every time, and you're the reason why I make these videos. So if you want to be a part of the community, come on in. So I'm going to be doing something new in 2024. I'm going to be giving away a Floppy Deep Dive t-shirt. Yep. If you're interested in winning that floppy deep dive t-shirt and entering into the contest, stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you exactly how to do it. So this time we're gonna be doing my favorite series to do. The reason I created this channel is what's on that floppy. Yep, we're gonna dive into the Commodore 64 world again, checking out these games I collected back in the 80s, calling BBSs and downloading on my 300, 1200, 2400 baud modems. And this is probably the first time I've loaded up these games in 30 years trying to figure out how to play them. Did I even have them named right on this floppy? For some reason, they always rename games back in the day. And sometimes I find, dang, I've been calling it the wrong name all these years. But there's going to be games. There's going to be utilities. There's going to be demos. There's going to be music. Who knows what we're going to find on here? And that's all part of the fun. So if that sounds fun to you, continue to watch this video and let's go. Boom. So let's go ahead and see what's on that floppy and check out this directory and see what we're going to be looking at today. So on the front side, let's see what we've got. We've got Teleclone 5.0, RMS Titanic, and Lucifer's Revenge by UCF or Cracked by UCF. I'm not sure exactly what that is. But let's go ahead and load up this Teleclone 5.0. And it's probably something you would use for a BBS. I can buff the name. I've never been a fan of the ice pick cracks. These ice pick usually cut stuff out. They had this purpose at the time, but anytime I got anything with ice pick, I felt like I'm missing something or the whole thing wasn't there for me to view. So not really a big fan of that. So it looks like we're starting over here with the utility 5.0 for the Commodore 64 and 128. And like I said, it's a blue box program. So this is a freaking program that came out, looks like in 1986, the Freaker's Friend. And then we're going, when we look at this, I could use a telephone with a data switch or without a telephone data switch. I'm just going to go ahead and hit B. But what this is exactly what I said, a modem back program. And this was something, looks, it's from Texas, my home state. But this was something that they could use to do different things. And usually when it's freaking, it means something along the lines where you'd hack the phone system where you can do something for free that usually should have cost you money. So this kind of programs would get you in trouble. I never actually tried it or used it myself because I was too scared to do it. I didn't want to get in trouble, but I want to go into this phone booth and box mode of it. And you look in here, they got all these different box modes and I'm by far, I'm not an expert on all this. I'm just aware it was out there and how it worked. But you see all these different modes that are out there, the blue box mode, the rainbow box mode, water box. They all could do different things. That water auto overseas, the number three there, something so you can make phone calls overseas. So I could call BBSs back in the 80s overseas to see what's going on or call BBSs to download games from over there. My biggest thing was they used to, back in the day before, we couldn't even call the city next to us would be a long distance call. So I live here in the Fort Worth area, 817 area code is what we grew up with. And next to us was Dallas and it's very close, but calling Dallas at 214 area code would be long distance. So we would use these different programs to be able to do it for free. And it's really interesting, and I'm sure a lot of people got into it, but it could do different things like make a sound like you're dropping a coin into the phone, all these different things. And it's all these sounds is what controlled the phone system. So you're allowed to get something for free. So that's what this Freakum dial -em is. And that's what this tool was for. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing that's on this. So I'm loading up this RMS Titanic and let's check this out. One of my favorite cracking groups was the Eaglesoft cracking game. 
And this is our best Titanic. Let's see if it gives us a year. January 8th, this was cracked. We'll go ahead and move on. But it said it was cracked in January 8th. So we're in January. So I'm sure it was probably like 86. So this is well over 30 years old. And Electric Dreams came out with this. And they present the Oxford Digital Enterprise. And let's see what we got actually on here. Ah, so it's one of these type of games that have all these that if you don't have them manually, you don't know what the heck you're doing. So we're turning down the volume here. Looks like it's April the 15th. Looks like you got a diver, you got money, a microphone, a moon, and a disc. Disc probably means save. Since it's a pound sign on that money, it looks like this game was made in England. And this diver. So I'm going to click into this diver. And this takes me into this diving screen. It looks like that's the Titanic there. And I could do different things to dive in. And it looks like I'm going to be searching the Titanic. So the Titanic's already sunk. Now I'm in this vessel. And I'm going in here to see what I can do. So let me see what I can figure anything out. It's like there's different parts and then go out. Let's go here, push the button, see where it takes me. So we're diving down. Oh, diving in to get a close up view. Come out a little bit. All right, looks like I'm looking around the room so I can control with the joystick. If I push the button and went forward, I'm in the furnace. So I could check it out these different rooms as I search for, I don't want to go back that way. It looks like I came in that way. Let's go ahead and go forward. So while I'm playing, let's look at this. So right off the bat, this game's like a history lesson in pixels. The devs did a really good job and did their homework, making the ship's layout and design as real as it gets. It's like a digital museum and we're walking right through it. And don't expect it to be like blasting aliens in here or anything about it. It's all about exploring and solving puzzles, and it's a total shift from the usual run-and-gun games of the time. And it was a refreshing change, and technically speaking, the game's a stunner for the Commodore 64. The graphics and sounds are top-notch, and they squeezed every little bit of juice out of the 8-bit to bring this Titanic to life. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Let's check out what this last thing that is on this front of this floppy is. I have no idea what this Ritlus for Revenge is. It's 187 blocks. Triad presents Lucifer's Revenge, created, mixed, and compacted by our own Lucifer. Oh, no data on here, but it looks like it's a demo. Let's hit enter. Let's see what this demo shows us, if we can get through it. And it, will it even work on my NTSC? So this is, like they said, work on American computers, so this is... So this is, looks like it's saying James Hatfield, Hetfield from Metallica saying, holy shit. Holy shit. Do we do anything else to this besides that? So it's all just a demo, as you can see. So let's go ahead and go to the back side of this floppy. I'm going to shut that off. So we had a utility, we had a game, we had a demo. And that's what happened back in the 80s when you would download games or whatever it might be. You might think you're getting a game and you end up you get a demo. So let's go ahead and see what's on this back side. So we got BB Volleyball, Danger Mouse, Traffic, and Modem Chess. So let's just start off with this BB Volleyball, load the first thing that's on here, and see what this says. Beach Blanket Volleyball is what it just popped up. So that's what BB stands for. So we've got a Beach Blanket Volleyball, F1 for one player, three for two players, and a demo. So here's Volleyball for the Commodore 64. So hey folks, we're going to be jumping back to 1986 with this classic Commodore 64 title. Beach Blanket Volleyball, released by Artworks. And this game, hidden gem from the golden age of the 8-bit gaming era. 
and we're about to hit the virtual beach for some retro volleyball action. And as you notice, it's very simplistic, but it was pretty fun to play. And, and despite it being simple, the visual uh, effects were perfectly captured the essence of the sunny beach environment. Trolling a team of three players here and we're up against either the computer or a second player. And it's perfect for some just friendly competition. And check out the gameplay mechanics. They're serving, jumping, spiking, all with that old school joystick. And it's straightforward and requires a good sense of timing to really nail those spikes. And this game's a testament of how engaging gameplay was at the core of gaming experience in the 80s. So, did you ever play this one, Beach Blanket Volleyball? Let me know your thoughts about it, and let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Danger Mouse, Double Trouble by Martin C. Sexton. Looks like this came out in 1984, so a little bit older of a game, two years older. Fire to continue, so I'm going to go ahead and hit fire. We got a trainee secret agent and we got a secret agent extraordinaire by three. I would have pushed up because I'm definitely a trainee. Off to the jungle, press fire to continue. And looks like I'm just randomly firing thing, music notes at these characters. I don't have a control when it fires, it fires on its own. And it looks like I'm out of it. Because now it's not firing at all. It looks like someone's playing tug of war down here at the bottom. Shows how many miles. 200, 200 something miles to get to the jungle. Something down here at the bottom. I just now noticed it was doing something. So now we're going to enter the jungle. Got crocodiles. Oh, you can jump on the crocodile. Oh, get out. All right. We had to do that. Now we got, looks like monkeys and panthers. I can still jump. I know. How about these trees? Yep. Hang on. I fell. What? Sure what that is at the bottom there. Not sure what I'm trying to do here. More gators. Whoops, got a butch got a. I can honestly say I don't ever remember playing this game. But I loaded it up to see that it works. I can honestly say I don't think I use this often even that much. A lot of British games. As you can see, we're impacting the Commodore scene by the past after 86. Can I get it over this gator? Just back to this again. Snakes, some monkeys. They hit you, they do fall. Nothing by trying to accomplish. We're on to the Android Mouse Firebase. What if I must have been in here? Can't really walk. Push button and interest in. All right, we're going to stop there. That's enough danger of house. Let's move on to the next one. So we're flying through this floppy. So let's look at traffic and see what traffic is. ABC Crackings presents traffic. Heavily influenced by British gaming. All right. So it looks like I can switch to different things and I might be able to control the lights. So I control the traffic flow. This one's getting backed up. So let's change the lights so this one can start going. Let's get this one going. And maybe it wants to go this way. So when things start getting backed up, I'm going to change the lights. Things start floating in. Keep an eye on things. This one's really backing up. Let's get it going. So now let's navigate through traffic. This is a 1984 puzzle game, and it's a brain teaser. And it's fascinating to see how game developers back then created engaging gameplay with the limitation of the era's technology. It was developed by Quicksilva LTD, and it's set in a real-time theme, and it also was released on the Amstrad CPC and the MSX. Interesting. So let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one. And last is modem chest. And we're not going to be able to do this one because, as it says, modem. And I don't have a modem connected anymore besides my Ultimate 2, which is online. But it is not a modem program. And you'd have to have a friend. So this is a game 
where you can actually dial into on a modem and play chess online. So back in the 80s, we had the option to play people online. Even back then, we were playing online. You think you're just doing it today over your PlayStation or Xbox, playing your friends? Uh Uh-uh. We've been doing it since the 80s, folks. And this is just one of the games that allowed us to do it and play the different games, play different people games online. Not as detailed with graphics and everything, but it's been going on for a long, long time. So if you didn't know what was around in the 80s, now you know. That's Modem Chess. Well, that was a really quick trip of nostalgia, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you played any of these or have any questions about these, please put it down in the comments. Love to hear what you guys think or what you saw here today. I know a lot of these you might not even have heard before because these aren't your routine ones that everybody's played. You get to see something a little bit different, something that a lot of people might not even know exist. And that's why I love doing it. I also want to hear your comments. Please give thumbs up or thumbs down. If you do give me thumbs down, please tell me why. I always want to improve this channel and make it better for you guys. And I just, if I don't know, I don't know. Now, let's talk about the t-shirt contest. Go. So all you have to do is go to floppydeepdive.com. Then come over on this top banner and click contact. And in contact, I need you to type your name, your email, and the message, I want a free floppy deep dive t-shirt. And then you just need to enter this text from above so it's not spamming me. And you hit submit. And that's it. You're entered in the drawing. At the end of March, I'll draw out the name. Whoever wins, I'll ship you a free floppy deep dive t-shirt. And that's all you have to do. So good luck. Thank you so much. Now check out these other videos that I've made for you. If you haven't seen them, they're new to you. And YouTube thinks you should watch them. Go watch it right now. What are you waiting for? Go. Go watch it.